Well, hello, everybody. This is Dale from the Precept Classes in Coleman, Alabama, and I thank you for joining with us. Um, we've been going through the book of Joshua. <clears throat> Excuse me. The book of Joshua has a lot of things for us to understand, a lot of things for us to discover and examine. This week, we're looking at chapters 13 through 17. So I mentioned in our last time together, uh, make sure that you don't get too lost in all the confusion sometimes of the king of this and the king of this, why there's two and a half over here and nine and a half and this kind of stuff. Uh, God makes it very plain, but a lot of times we blow these things off and we think they're not important. They are important, but just ask the Lord to reveal these things to you and he'll show you. And a lot of times he repeats stuff. That's what we saw last week and we're seeing some this week of how things that we've seen in the past, particularly if you've studied the Pentateuch, that you're seeing how it's explained here. So in this week's lesson, uh, Joshua 13 begins uh, with the fact that Joshua is old, and God tells him, you know, uh, Joshua was old, and then he comes to him and says, you're old and aged now. <clears throat> the Lord spoke to him. But he said there's much land still needs to be possessed. And sometimes people get confused because they say, well, I thought all the land was possessed already. I thought they had it all. And we talked a little bit about that last week. Yes, that's true. They were in and they had the land, but they had not utterly destroyed the enemy. And there were still uh, pockets of the enemy. And there were still entire areas of the enemy uh, that dwelled within the land that they were possessing. Uh, boy, that speaks to us as believers because we are saved. We are born again. We're sanctified. <clears throat> we're recreated. But there are pockets of the enemy within which we are not to play with and we're not to keep unto ourselves. But these things are to be utterly destroyed. And as we utterly destroy them and utterly destroy them, uh, the Lord would do uh, even more marvelous things within us. <clears throat> so in chapter 13, you see that the uh, Lord is saying, okay, here's what's got to happen. Got to portion out these nine and a half tribes. And uh, the rest of chapter 13 deals with the two and a half tribes on the east side of the Jordan. Israel already possessed that land, but if you remember, uh, the warriors from... Uh, the east tribe, shall we say, though beyond the Jordan, stayed with their brothers and went forth to conquer and take the land. And we're going to see at the end of Joshua that eventually it's all said and done and they're allowed to go back into their land. You'll notice there's one tribe, though, that did not receive an inheritance. That's the tribe of Levi. <clears throat> there's a couple of interesting things because when you look at the passages, particularly in Genesis 49, you'll see that as uh, uh, Israel was giving a blessing to his children right before he died, that he would start out and say, oh, Reuben, you are my strength. You are just a wonderful, 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 uh, but you're like wild water. And then he says, what happened to him? He said, you know, you've lost your inheritance because uh, you laid with your father's concubine. And everybody knows you do not lay with your father's concubine. right? But he, left it, he lost his double portion as the firstborn. He still received the land. You see two groups right there, though, that are rather interesting. Uh, Levi and Simeon. And the reason that they had a punishment that came upon them because they had defended their sister Dinah. Uh, Dinah, if you remember the story, uh, had been attacked uh, by a man who really loved her, had been uh, uh, raped by him. And the city felt so bad about this, they went to the people and said, we want to be a part of this, we want to be a party, what can we do? Well, <clears throat> Simeon and Levi had this little plan right here. And the plan was, uh, we all have to be circumcised. And when you do this, then you'll be a part of us. And the men said, okay, we'll do that. So they were all circumcised on one day. And then Simeon and Levi went and killed all the men. And God said this was a self-will thing. In other words, it was a revenge kind of thing that was not of me. And because of that, they lost their inheritance. Now, the Levites were probably restored by a thing that you see, a passage in Malachi uh, speaks of that. And probably out of what Phinehas did in Numbers 25. You saw that in your homework this week. <clears throat> But and the Levites would therefore not have any land, not because of that, but because their inheritance was the Lord. But what about Simeon? And I had somebody ask about this because they were teaching a Sunday school lesson just lately, or I think they were leading a Sunday school lesson. And some of the maps they checked, they found out that Simeon was located in the southern kingdom. But usually you see the southern kingdom is um, Judah and Benjamin. And where do you find Simeon? And as you know, when you start looking at Bible maps, depending upon uh, what era they're looking at, uh, or age, what time frame, uh, the maps look differently. And even within the same time frame, the maps can be different from one publisher to another. And she was sort of confused because in the middle of Judah, she saw this Simeon thing with, with sort of a vague border. Well, that's absolutely what occurred. Simeon uh, inherited a portion of land by having some cities in the midst of Judah, is the way it's described. But God told him, uh, through their father in Genesis 49 that you would be dispersed throughout Israel. And that's literally what happened. So when the land was divided at this time with Joshua, they were in the midst of uh, 
of Judah, but within a couple of generations, they were dispersed throughout the land and had no inheritance. So there's some curious things that we see related to, to these uh, uh, tribes. Uh, Joshua 14 and Joshua 15, um, these are the accounts of uh, Joseph, son, Ephraim and Manasseh. And sometimes people say, well, how did this come about? Well, when the Lord changed Jacob's name, the Israelite had 12 sons, but he adopted Joseph's sons as his own. So that's why they call the half tribe of Manasseh. Okay, that, that type of thing. Half Manasseh was on this side, half was on this side. But then you also have uh, sometimes referred to as the half tribe of Joseph, which is somewhat a misnomer in it. But anyway, that's where the name came about. And the reason that they were incorporated in because uh, Jacob named Israel did this. And then in these chapters, we find out that Caleb was of the tribe of Judah. And Caleb came and reminded Joshua and said, hey, you know, Moses told him, me that I can have this land. He said, I was 40 at that time. I followed the Lord 45 years and I'm stronger than I ever was. And he said, I want that land now. And Joshua said, go for it. And Caleb went down and the land that he took was literally the land that had the Anakim in it, that had the giants. And if you remember the account, the reason that the uh, uh, spies were so scared when they came back from spying out the land was, there's giants in the land, there's giants in the land. They make us look like grasshoppers. 45 years later. <clears throat> Caleb's 85 years old. He goes in there and says, let me take this. And Caleb also uh, winds up uh, becoming, uh, marrying somebody, marrying a young girl. And you see the account there uh, of what happened in the midst of all this. Um, <clears throat> so not, not Caleb didn't marry, but Caleb gave his daughter as a blessing for the inheritance. And he gave it to Othniel. Okay, and we'll see more about him in Judges. Sorry about that. Uh, distracted by a bug over here. <clears throat> now, the, the last couple of chapters here. In chapter 16 to 17, you see these chapters of what happens with Ephraim and Manasseh and how they're divided. Uh, Joshua 16, you find out that here's Ephraim's inheritance, but they did not completely take it. Verse 10 says that. Joshua 17, you say, you find out this is Manasseh's inheritance. But verse 12 says they did not take it completely, which means that they allowed some of the enemy to stay in the land. And it goes back to what we were talking about last week. We need to be far more like Caleb was. Caleb fully followed the Lord, even as Joshua fully followed. Doesn't mean they didn't make mistakes. Joshua nor Caleb be the one asked the Lord about the Gibeonites, for instance. But they fully followed the Lord. His inheritance was in Hebron, which was a very special city. He was strong, and he drove out the Anakim. We do not want to be like what the balance of the children of Israel were, where they were scared of what was in the land because they had iron chariots and things like that. We need to live boldly and fully dealing with the enemy in the way that Caleb did. Again, I'm Dale from the Precept Classes in Coleman. I'll see you again next time.